our final speaker in this session is this year's Stephen A. Coombs Award winner, Rob Cook of Pixar. Rob. Thank you, John. Well, this is my 32nd SIGGRAPH conference, and I've experienced the conference from a lot of perspectives, both as a student and as an employee, as a papers chair and a film show chair, both as part of academia and part of Hollywood. And so today what I'd like to do is to take those various perspectives and try to give you some of my thoughts about where we are and where the field might be going. Um, I've had a lot of conversations with people about this, and what I'm hoping to do is give a little more clarity and shape to some of the things that it seems like uh, a lot of us are feeling. First of all, we've seen some big changes in the last three decades. Uh, the most obvious is that computers are a lot faster. In 1976, my first computer was a PDP-1110. It had 256,000 256, instructions per second and uh, 16,000 um, bytes of memory. By comparison, my laptop today is about 100,000 times that powerful. It's hard to comprehend a number that big. It's um, the difference between an hour and a decade. It's also, interestingly enough, to turn out to be the difference between interactive rates and an hour per frame. And remember that, we'll come back to it later. So to get some sort of sense of this type of difference and the type of effect this large of a change can have, consider that flying is only about 100 times faster than running. But this conference would not exist if we all had to get here on foot. Also, we're a lot bigger field with a lot more going on and we're a lot more international. And another thing that's changed is that we know a lot more now. Originally, there was no field of computer graphics to go into. And so most of us got into it in some kind of oddball way, and we didn't have the background that people have today. And in some cases, we hadn't even figured out what expertise would be relevant. And that made things a lot harder. For example, I really struggled to figure out distribution ray tracing, suspecting that there must be similar work in other fields, but I was unable to find it. I spent days hunkered down in the Berkeley Library without finding anything relevant. I had figured out that it was important to use a particular type of sample pattern, a blue noise pattern, but I didn't know why it was important, I didn't know how to analyze it, and I couldn't find a reference that was relevant. My break came when Alvy Ray Smith happened across an article in that week's science journal that had a picture that looked a lot like my sample distribution. And what was this? Well, it turned out to be a picture of the distribution of rod cells in the eye of a rhesus monkey. This was stunning. It meant that this odd pattern was not a fluke. Our visual system was used to this pattern, and it seems to have evolved to be insensitive to sampling errors from this particular distribution. Eventually, I found out that this technique was a form of something called Monte Carlo integration, which was originally developed by physicists in 1947 though they used it for a different purpose, namely to simulate neutron diffusion in the hydrogen bomb. Here is a blackboard with von Neumann's flow diagram of the first Monte Carlo algorithm. And by the way, this was the first algorithm ever run on the ENIAC. So computers are faster, we've grown, the work is of higher caliber, and yet, some of us have a sense that something's not quite right. And it's hard to put our finger on it. Some people complain that the field is narrow, that it's just about Hollywood. Others say that a lot of the work seems uninspired, just minor refinements to in, in establish techniques. And I can understand why people who've been here a long time feel this way. It used to be that, when you, that you couldn't wait to get to SIGGRAPH. I mean, you didn't know what you'd see, but you knew you would see something amazing. My first SIGGRAPH was 1978, and just consider a few of the things we saw in my first five years. The first surfaces with bumps on them, the first curved shadows on curved surfaces with shadow maps, 
first reflections and refractions, amazing animation from NYIT, planetary flybys from Jim Blenn, Lauren Carpenter's Vol Libra fractal movie, Postscript, the Postscript paper by John Warnock that turned out to lay the foundation for desktop publishing, the first art show ever in 1981, and Jim Clark's paper on the SGI geometry engine. And the pace of discovery was breathtaking. It was the early days of exploring the graphics continent, and we came to expect the unexpected at every turn. The really big surprises don't seem as common anymore. And on the other hand, we have seen a lot more careful, mature work. And some people kind of suspect maybe that's part of the problem, but it's really not. In fact, we need this really solid work. For one thing, it's good and, and important in its own right. And for another, it is what provides the foundation that's essential for further exploration. Without it, the field would have fizzled long ago. But still, we have the question, and it's a legitimate question. Have we already explored most of the graphics continent? Is our field destined to become less exciting because all that's left are minor refinements? We're a very young field to be facing this question. This is only the 36th year of SIGGRAPH. People getting their PhD today have more years of their career ahead of them than that. And so if we're already getting stale, then what kind of, kind of a career will they have? I think we need to consider the possibility that maybe this is just not a very deep subject. I mean, hey, it's been a great ride. But you know, maybe this the field is just a quirk of this particular moment in technology, and maybe the glory days are over. This is not just idle speculation. This is a real possible future for us. We could easily find ourselves slowly fading into a niche. And whether we recognize it or not, this is a crisis. So what do we do about it? Well, let's start by trying to understand the nature of the crisis. This is a crisis of success. We only find ourselves in this predicament because we have been so successful. We have solved or largely solved an impressive number of hard problems. Scene complexity, surface appearance, lighting, camera effects, and simulation, to name just a few. We've written a lot of great papers and produced a lot of great professors in leading universities. Our conference is larger than that of our parent organization. We've made special effects so good that they've gone from a specialty mainly used in science fiction films to a mainstream tool used in almost all film genres. And we've had a similar impact on other things like games, architecture, ads, design, science, and medicine. But I believe this very success has, started, has distorted our view of the field. It has led us to think of the field as just computer-generated images. Now that is and will continue to be an important part of our field, but if we define the field by our past successes, if we allow those successes to circumscribe the field, then we are automatically putting ourselves into an ever-narrowing corner. Our challenge then is this. How do we define the field not by the successes behind us, but by the opportunities ahead of us?